All right, everyone, welcome back to week 10 of Skulls and Shackles. I actually knew what week it was before I opened my mouth this time. And uh, we return with the party having recently captured another ship, and the Laughing Dolphin is pulled up beside them. Uh, for those of you that haven't checked it out yet, my 5th edition one-shot was played. It was extremely bloody. There were numerous deaths, repeated deaths. It is an interesting system. You can check it out on my YouTube. And uh, let's check in with everybody. Craig, of course, you're getting moved in, and I can see that uh, you've got stuff going up behind you. How has your week been? Busy as heck, man. It's been uh, it's been nonstop craziness. As like you said, behind me, you can see that I've been putting up furniture and unpacking boxes and all that great stuff. So it's been a busy and tiring week. Looking forward to being Sifrig again. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this character. I am. It's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. I want to spoil the surprise, but uh, Adam, who's also a player in this, he'll be joining us later. Adam was so taken by your play of Sifrig that for his fifth edition character, he's basically uh, developing like a noble house. I think he's going to have a Sifrig in it. And for my <laughs> Carrion Crown campaign, his best friend in that just died, and his character is basically Sifrig, but level 9. Nice. So he's Sifriging everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Maximum Sifrigs. What have I created? <laughs> A legacy. A legacy. Nice. Dan. Awesome. How are you doing this week? Well was the big game of humans versus zombies. You could probably tell by my reddish tone that I attempted to... I actually washed my face in fake blood and tried to wash it out once to no avail. Yeah, you're shaking your head. Yeah. It's, uh... Yeah. Out damn spot. <sighs> well, did you at least have fun playing humans versus zombies? Oh, of course. Not even a question. Of course. Lorraine, I know you've had an interesting week. There was that weird-ass wedding thing. I just, I don't even want to talk about that, but how has the rest of your week been, except for Tuesday nights? Well, um, if we're not including Tuesday nights, because some people look on the love between a pony and a half-elf and think that it's wrong. <laughs> Especially when they're asked to be the best man at the wedding and then they complain about it. Other than that, it is fabulous. Friend hater. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, but I want to. No, no, you don't. <laughs> Speaking of which, Dom, I still need those photos so I can do the wedding album. <laughs> I don't think he's joined to watch yet. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think you're taking our fake marriage seriously. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the email's gone out yet, which means no one's shown up. It's it's interesting. Ever since Amazon announced they were going to take over Twitch, quality of Twitch has dropped like a rock, rather than the <laughs> other way around. Things are getting worse rather than better. I don't get it. Alright, well, can anyone fill us in on what happened last time? Perhaps even a, a reminder of a certain duel. My favorite part so far. Oh yeah. <laughs> that. Nobody. Well, I guess Adam's usually the note taker. We killed I'll the go, paladin. Yes, I'll go from my memory, which is uh, you heard in Blood Cove about a shipment of goods mm -hmm. heading through a specific area. You continue to raid villages and get luck shots where you. <laughs> Four out of five rolls ended up being less than 15, so the improbability of that's fairly high. Uh, and uh, get money. And finally, you fought a paladin 
to a standstill in a duel. Sifrig, a.k.a. Master Scourge, one-on-one -on -one battle. Chain tripping, repeatedly trying to put this guy down. He would just stand up and continue to fire arrows, smiting, healing. And uh, just at the last second before Master Scourge laid the final blow, the Paladin won. And then the entire rest of the party stabbed the Paladin in the back and murdered him. <laughs> it was a good times. Oh, and they took a ship. Yeah. Kid Tones, welcome to alignment change. Yeah. yeah. Yep, now true neutral. H happy alignment change to you. For now. For now. Happy alignment to ship today. And a bloody pirates to you. Okay, so we begin with the Laughing Dolphin, and it is docked just off of the uh, bow of. Uh oh. That's not good. Uh oh, it's never good. Well, do we need to begin with the Revelation of Doom? If you would like to recite your Revelation of Doom, that would be fine. The uh-oh is that I thought I had the sheet pulled up to the name of the enemy ship, but I did not. Mm. The name of the ship was the Sambalat. Captain by Captain Aisha Hamiyas. And uh, you guys have taken it. And I think there was some question as to which ship you were going to take over and which you were going to give to newly minted Captain Sandar Quinn. And I think the final decision was because we cannot easily remove the ballistas, we are taking the ship with weapons and leaving her the ship without weapons. Very well. You can mark down the following equipment under your ship which will be editing the ship equipment you already have. And of course, <clears throat> there are no longer 20 bolts each. There are now only 16 bolts each. Mm. So CMD doesn't change? No, the CMD of your ship is relying upon the pilot's skill. Yeah. You, it's the same type of ship, except I think it might have a bit less sail, and instead has uh, ballistas for shooting. Now, of course, those ballistas are mounted aft, so they can only be shooting at things that you're running away from, but... Not exactly helpful for pirates. We don't do a lot of running. Oh, I don't think you've watched any <laughs> specific Caribbean Pirates movies. Because they <laughs> well, do a yeah. lot of running. They do a lot of running. A whole lot. In fact, that's pretty much all they do for three movies. Right yep. up until the end where they stop running and start shooting. Alright, so you transfer your standard Commodore to the Sandbalot. You don't need to get this vessel squibbed if you don't want uh, because, you know, you acquired it legally-ish. <laughs> Wait, we, we ran them down and killed them all? That's legal? Can we interrogate this woman? You said that she was an independent captain, so we don't have to worry about her employers or insurance agent coming after us? That's correct. Now, you might have to worry about an insurance agent coming after you, but they aren't often known for going up against pirates. They might just send you a, a document requesting fundage. <laughs> <laughs> but she is an independent uh, captain. And you can ask her whatever you'd like. That sucks to be a small businesswoman in this day and age. It does indeed. <laughs> So I have marked her ship as being the Sambalot. What questions would you like to ask her? Um, to wh who is her current contract with? She says, ah, yes, of course, my current contract. Are you sure you want to know that? Well, yes, I generally like to know who's going to send assassins after me in the night. Very well. 
If you must know, my current contract was with Alkenstar Gunworks, based out of the Grand Duchy of Alkenstar. Oh, I've been updating the old shift one. Changing lines where necessary. Oh, okay. I just figured we'd want to have two. I mean, I, I copy the old one. Okay, no biggie. Okay. Um. Hmm. What else can she tell us? An excellent question. Tell us more about these uh, Chalaxian Crusaders. She says, ah yes, of course, the Chalaxians. Is there a specific part of the Chalaxian fleet you'd like to know more about? The pirate hunting part? Ah, yes. I've heard that the flagship, the Dominator, has been sailing in these waters. Indeed, it's a fairly large vessel. They say it has over 50 ballista mounted on it. She's part of a, a flag fleet of at least eight ships in her squadron. And I know that the Chalaxians have, in fact, been arming mercenary groups and personal noble fleets rather than bringing their actual navy down here. However, it's mm -hmm. said that their navy is preparing for a full assault at some point, but... Then again, they've always said that for the last 20 years. Hard um, to say. However, the Dominator is the largest ship they've sent down here in recent memory. Are any other kingdoms offering buccaneer status? I would think not. I suspect that perhaps Osiria or Andor might accept Buccaneer status, but if you're looking to become a free captain and sail these waters, the only place you're going to find that is in Port Peril. And can you tell us anything about the free captains? Of course, what would you free like Free captains of note, people that would like to chuck claw our face off? Ah, well, let me go pull up my gigantic list of free captains <laughs> somewhere in the other books. This is not a question I had anticipated, but I will certainly attempt to... Uh, tell me about the lay of the sea. The lay of the sea? Also tell me about merchanting. I.e., how can we become merchants? Ah, becoming a merchant is dangerous in these waters. It's said that those who become merchants and still attempt to sail as free captains are often set upon by their others. Well, I was more thinking, you know, we want to go legit. Is there a different type of sail setup or other visual signal that we can use to let people know that we're not horrible threatening pirates as we sail by them? I, mean, I don't want to unnecessarily scare old ladies. You could certainly buy flags indicating that you were a member of a certain country or shipping lane. You've taken my ship, so of course you've inherited its flag, although I'd obviously prefer you return it to me once we arrive on land. I would hate for you to be pretending to be me, otherwise I might have to kill you. Yeah, it is the traditional politics for ransoming off you and your officers. Well, our agreement was you would put me down on land, so... Yeah, I'm just in the future. You ah, know. Is there a standard... There I is... hate to be seen as being new at this. You know how it is. There is such a, a standard. It usually involves an exchange of a certain amount of gold, given the prestige of those involved, and an exchange of weapons. Okay. Do you have any officers on your ship you want to take with you? All of them. Alright, out of your crew of 20-something, how many are officers? Two. Mm. 
Other questions, guys? Yeah, if, we, if she takes two of her officers, we can go two off of ours and still be 20 and 20, right? Maintain full crew on both ships? Yes, probably. Okay. Um, You'll have to tell me. <laughs> can't I can't think of anything else, no. Do you know of any other good loot around? <laughs> I mean, we're reasonably close to uh, Megang Cove, according to this rumors handout. The lost messenger could be around here. So the thing about those rumors handouts, if you guys want to do stuff like that, let me know like a week or two ahead of time so I can have it planned. Uh, those rumors okay. and stuff are just literally that. She says, I, I have my list of the pirate lords of the shackles. If you have any particular ones that you're looking for, perhaps the highest ranked among them? Sure. Who do I go to to become a free captain? Ah, what well. forms do I have to file? To become a free captain, you must, of course, impress a certain number of pirates with your piraciness. And in, in game terms, tutorial activated, you should at least reach 10 infamy points and disrepute, and additionally have plunder to present to the Hurricane Lord. You'll have to sail into Port Peril under your own recognizance and take the tests. Unfortunately, I'm not sure what the tests are, as I am not myself a pirate. But I am told that they are harrowing, and not all survive them. After that, you Ooh, must have short a, essay answers. You must have a port to claim as your own. And once all those conditions are met, you will find yourself a free captain and pirate lord. A port? We have to take a port? Who makes the decision of who gets a port? The Hurricane Lord prefers the free captains come before him already owning a port. Awesome. So I guess we get a port kind of like we got a ship. Take it. <laughs> um, one more question. As far as, you know, infamy and establishing a reputation goes, what's your opinion on slavery slash non-slavery of poor people? Oh, well, of course. I am against slavery as a business practice, but I hear it's working quite well for a number of pirates. Now, I do base out of blood ports, so I see a lot of the slave trade. It works out great for them. But I, of course, think it's an abomination against humanity. I only use free men in my crews. Also, slaves are expensive. 500 gold pieces? Not on my deck. <laughs> Oh, and final question. What was his name? What do you know about Halfling Savior, whose name I've forgotten? Captain Atticus Earl Styles. Pegworthy. Yeah, him. Which one? Oh, Pegworthy. Atticus Styles. Oh, Atticus Styles. Well, I heard that he died recently. He was something of a nuisance. I think he tried to rob me once. Hmm. Do you happen to know um, where he died? I heard that his ship was last seen sailing into Port Peril. It's in the Daily Bard. Well, I'm hearing a Do lot of herds. you assume that journalism is accurate? Mostly. A whole lot of herds, but not a whole lot of saw. Well... I can't tell you that I saw him die. That would be a lie. When he was busy dying, I was on a run south past the Tidewater Rock. Hmm. That rock that we still have to break? Yeah. Oh, you're <coughs> heading to the Tidewater Rock? Eventually. They have a fine port facility there. In fact, if you were looking to affect repairs... That would be a, a nice place to do it. It's very well defended. It's got a nice little cove guarded wink, wink. by an enormous siege tower. Sense motive. Is she sending us to our deaths? <laughs> Her description of Tidewater Rock sounds a lot like 
what you've heard before, it is a heavily defended fortress that's currently understaffed and... I'm not saying it's not a heavily defended fortress. I just uh, want to know, will they try to kill us if we sail she there? She says, well, you should know that the mistress of Tidewater Rock has been looking for a replacement for her lost husband for some time. If you need to crack <coughs> the rock, perhaps what you're doing is not necessarily cracking the rock, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I you know, like our our gives you a very of academics and dwarfs. She gives you a very <laughs> she... swarmy smile. Does she like short, hairy men? <laughs> well, I will say this. Her last husband was known as Iron Borrow for his iron shirt that he died in. I don't know that he was short, but he was certainly hairy. Where can I get a belt of gender changing at this level? <laughs> uh, Is that within our allowed books? <laughs> Elixir of more. opposite genders are only 2,500 gold apiece. Yeah, but how no one knows how to make those. Oh. <laughs> You and your ACG stuff. You've been you've been fiated. <laughs> Damn it! You can have tomes. It would have been such himself. a. He'll just have to sit in port for like two or three weeks. Yeah, if I actually get like blue potion, <laughs> which I don't have. Um, where does she want us want us to drop her off at? Oh, wherever you feel like it. Uh, any major port. Will uh, do. Okay, that's not the same just thing. That's where we're coming. <laughs> I think you broke up there, Lorraine. She's being for someone we captured and robbed of her livelihood. I'm a little suspicious. She says, oh, well, this kind of thing happens from time to time. I've put away enough to have a new ship. And, of course, I have a small vessel in Port Peril already ready to go. You know, I retired it when I bought the Sandbalat. But uh, it's certainly been upkept on its dry dock. This kind of thing happens, you know. Sometimes you try to smuggle goods through the shackles and some upstart who doesn't respect you will try to steal your ship. Yep. Pretty much. Oh, Pretty thank much. you for being a jolly good sport about it. We'll try well, I'm going to collect the insurance ship. money on this. The only issue is that you're going to have to deal with the gunworks. Have fun with that. Yay. Yes, the Grand Duchy of Alkenstar does not mess around when you take their stuff. Alkenstar? Mm. We need to make a note of that. Grand Duchy. Alkenstar, that is the land without magic. Indeed. And Instead, as you might they suspect the Alkenstar Gunworks is Galarian's sole uh, manufactory of firearms. I don't know. I've been there. I remember they're a little flaky. They make guns. It's just in Wardens of the Reborn Forge, they make crappy guns. Hmm. Hmm. You know what we need? A handsome level 14 uh, nope. pistolero. He nope. can go marry this woman. <laughs> you know what we need? We need. A human buccaneer. Nope. <laughs> you know what you need is Captain Atticus Styles. Yes, that is exactly who. Oh. Well, here's the question. Alter so self, if we alter have self, to alter self, move alter self. the uh, woman from Tidewater Rock, do any of you feel you have a diplomacy high enough, given our attempts at wooing fellow sailors? <laughs> uh. Maybe she'd be impressed I mean, with things inspiration. Other than inspiration can carry me a little bit. No, you don't want me. I have in between a zero and a plus six in diplomacy, depending. So you're basically saying you have to use inspiration to get anything. Yep, pretty much. Understood. <laughs> well, I'm a minus three, so. Yeah. It's like every romance novel I've ever read. All five of them. We should ask around for more information. An interesting thought. 
What team does she play for? <laughs> <laughs> Unless specifically stated, all characters on Galarian are considered to be bi. I don't so. think that's true at all. I heard it somewhere. I have not. Okay, can we take a quick side trip to Karamaga? Nope. Pick up everybody's nope. favorite NPC. <laughs> you know, everyone talks about Miss Feathers, but I've never really encountered Miss Feathers for more than like five seconds. That's horrible. I managed to shut down three gaming tables the last time I ran that because everyone stopped the game they were playing and came over to interact with Miss Feathers. <laughs> we had people coming in from the other room to see what was going on. Now, Patrick Harris does have a character named Miss Feathers that he role plays as being the actual Miss Feathers. That was terrifying. Yeah. Very terrifying. Miss Feathers is like seasoning, it's good in small doses. Alright. I just posted the TV Trump's quote. Like, it says, Word of God, is that all characters in the books can be considered bisexual unless shown to be otherwise. You're using TV tropes as a reference for Pathfinder <laughs> Adventure Pass. This is where I initially yeah. found it. I'm going to look further. <sighs> if one of your viewers can do, can help me with the work, I would be much appreciated. Or much appreciated. Hey, viewers, back me up on this. You totally want to see a lesbian <laughs> thing getting on here. <laughs> <laughs> Message Arthur. Use the chat. Spam it. I feel sorry for Arthur. Before, before this gets out of hand, I I didn't want to reveal it, but before it gets out of hand, there is in the adventure path the allocation for Lady Smith having a uh, female to female relationship. I shall put it in that very discreet and clinical terminology. <laughs> So please do not go looking at this quote and send me 5,000 links to it. <laughs> the only There's one person in the world I'll accept that quote from, and that's Crystal Frazier. If you're out there, Crystal Frazier, answer my tweets. The best scenario author ever. Okay, anything to ask the people captive? Sorry, what was the question? I was asking members of the crew if there's anything else to this woman. Do you guys have any other questions? Nope. Not that I can think of. I do have a list of famous free captains if you'd like that. Yes. Okay. No okay. help. Among... We need to find someone approachable to kind of back us a little bit. I see. Well, among the pirate lords, there is Aranax Endemian. He is the master of Hell's Harbor. He is a commander of the vessel Tyrannius, and he is a former Chalaxian patriot who has uh, taken up shop as a pirate and now is the first line of defense against the Chalaxian fleet. There's also Avamor Sorinash, who is a were shark who lives on Shark <laughs> Island and has the ship the Blood Moon. His entire crew is full of wares. We should find him. He is our natural ally. There is Lady Cerise Bloodmorn, who uh, operates <coughs> out of Motaku Island, who is an ally of and owes loyalty to Admiral Tessa Farwind. I suppose at that point I should also mention Tessa Farwind, who is the operator of the entire area of Kent and Mataku Island and is generally considered the runner-up or next candidate in line for Hurricane King. Where 
Where is this guy? Sorry, there's actually a pretty cool pirate lord, but I gotta figure out. I swear, if he has stretchy limbs, I'm. No, no. There's a there's a divorced couple who are both pirate lords. It's wide Olga and someone else, and they are fantastic. When they're not murdering each other, they're busy stealing from half the people in the world. And there's, of course, the pirate lord, Kurdak Bonefist. So named because uh, as a young officer aboard a ship, he fought the infamous Lich-ass pirate. Piratist? Lich piratist? Lich-ass pirate? Female lich pirate. There we go. And one-on-one, uh, -on -one, he entered her cabin and returned dawn of the next day. She was dead, and his hand was replaced by the Lich's hand. Ooh. And in that hand, he is always armed with a pistol that fires magical rounds, and he can never let it go. He has been Hurricane King for over 40 years, and has spent his time raiding transports of uh, certain countries to continually take in the Sun Orchid Elixir from those transports and keep himself eternally young. So he has remained Pirate Lord longer than any other Pirate Lord in history. That's all I got for you. Well, um, I'm going to the rock and see. But I suppose that we need to deal with is it going to be tonight or tomorrow night's excitement first? I don't know. Well, you tell me. As far as the two days. Well, are we, we can drop her off the evening of the second day, or are we at the start of the third day? Are you asking me? Because I have yes. no idea. <laughs> well, we're right at Goat's Head. I'm just saying, when uh, people receive a warning that in three days your souls are going to be claimed, somebody should keep track of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that was well, Adam keeping track of time. But... Oh, if you're asking about that, yes. You, uh, you've actually already passed the third day. Oh, he was, oh. that warning was delivered on the morning of the third day. You may want to reread it more carefully. I'm going to pull it up so the folks at home can uh, check that out. Three days. Say, so is Uncle Book's physically still on the ship? Yes. Okay. So, well, Uncle Books is uh, sleeping off his blood hangover, whatever. I like that. All in favor of going through his stocks and clearing out the rest of those blood vials. Hi. <laughs> oh, that's just mean, y'all. <laughs> he worked hard for those. I don't he's care a devil if he keeps worshiper. what he's got. I just don't want him getting anybody else's. He's a devil yeah, worshiper. Yeah, I'm just, you know, the not telling us about, you know, creepy three day giant. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for punching figure. him in the head until he tells us why in the heck he didn't tell us what was going on with this, but. Uh... <laughs> in the head. Well, you know what's going on with this? What's going on with the extended Atticus Styles family story? <laughs> There's a couple things I want to punch him in the head about. <laughs> you know what? Now everybody's. You doing know, it. It, it's about time I show. I I'm gonna show Captain Ferris the my notes, the uh, okay. Atticus Styles, and the. I think it's called the note. Yeah, the note number one. I will share it. Did you want to with share everybody? It with everyone, okay. Except for books. 
Are you do you mean the Attica Styles Last Will or you mean the Uh the Note Number One and the Attica Styles Last Will, yeah. Okay. Well I can tell you he's already seen Note Number One, so Who Books has? Yeah. <clears throat> of course he has. Of fucking course that was the note. <laughs> No, right? Treasure map. You had me at treasure. <laughs> I get first dibs, remember. What treasure map? I don't see any treasure map. Uh, Atticus Styles last will, his body has a map. And it's in the harbor of Port Peril? Or more specifically, at oh, the okay. bottom if of the you, harbor of Port Peril? Okay. Besides, it's kind of mine. So, we're going to go get my treasure. So possessive. And what well, was the other letter? He there gave it to me. I'll tell you what, you can go get your treasure, and then we can meet you somewhere later. We'll see how that works out. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll give you all a portion. Maybe you can just stand So the in a really harbor. sad question is at what point does Atticus Styles claim to have died? I don't think he yet in any of these letters has claimed to have died yet. Well, well like yeah, if you're a bunch getting of people this I'm are dead. saying he's dead and we have his will that says if you're receiving this I'm dead. That's true. He had a contingency plan, I guess. The other captain gave I just this to say, me, the from one a really who... sad perspective, at the point that um, Books got the first letter, was he still alive and we might have found him? Or has yeah. he been dead all along? I will not answer that question. It will be found out through story. Curse you! Why doesn't this place have a bloody calendar? More at 11. <laughs> the answer may surprise you. <laughs> All these people telling us about, oh yeah, I heard he died. No one knows, like, what month it was. <laughs> News travels slow. slow. Honestly, people, don't you have any concept of decent storytelling? Well, that newspaper <laughs> was fresh, and it's about a week's travel from Port Peril to Blood Cove, so you have a baseline. That was three days so, ago. So, so basically, days ago, yeah. Minimum. So we're looking at, yeah, he might have been alive. Yeah, because he got that back when we were still doing the raid under Captain Harrigan. Yep. Yes. Before being sent off with uh, Master Captain Scourge and everybody else on that misadventure, and that was like Two Captain weeks Plug or something? Master Scourge. Yeah. Yes, it was about 20 days. All right, so, yeah, so. might not have made much difference. Could it? Could it have not? Who knows? Are you responsible for the de death of Captain Atticus Styles? He knew there was danger, but he had promised his son that he would meet him in Port Peril. And nothing, nothing is as important as family. Oh, Unless you're dead. Right? Well, evidently we have at least one dead person who believes that loyalty to your crew is... <laughs> <laughs> or at least not disobeying orders. Um, so, do we want to continue to wander around... I think we should I'm try to get her off we, the ship. Well, we could dock in... Other than rickety squibs, are there any local squibberies? Nope. It's pretty Why do we need squid? squib? Rickety squibs is the only squibbery that you know of. That isn't to say there aren't we, more. It's just the only one you know of. Yeah. Um, do we want to get most, this ship? Sorry, as I mentioned, most pirates either... Uh, 
paid to get it in a dry dock in a major port, or they are masters of their own ports and just do it there? Yeah. Well, I mean, from a purely legal perspective, it was her boat and failure for delivery was hers, but do we want to get this one re-squibbed? Do we have enough gold to get this one re-squibbed as well? I thought last time kind of cleaned us out. It's going to be the exact same because it's the same type of ship. So 2,000 yeah. pieces. Uh, let's see. I... We have not well, pulled in... Well, if we sell off the longbow, that'll be... <laughs> that'll be quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Definitely I don't think that's going to go over so well. Longboats Nestle. are necessary for people who can't walk on water. Yeah, I'm but just saying, it hates us. Represent people. I have a short bow. That long bow hates us. Oh, oh, long bow. Long bow, not long, long boat, boat. Sorry. I... Yeah. Yeah. That could probably go. Um. Well, do we want to dock at Goat's Head, drop her out, look for rumors, and then decide if we're going to do more raiding or head over to the rock? That sounds like a plan. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, um, I suppose we follow the established tradition of giving Sandara Quinn most of our trained and loyal crew and, like, two-thirds of them, and then we take two-thirds of the new people and one-third of experienced hands to keep an eye on them? Yeah, that's probably a good call. Are you giving off any of the named crew members? Well, I mean, over half of our crew is named, so we kind of have to, math-wise. Well, we can kind of leave it up to them, you know, well, see who, see who mean, wants to and see who Sandara, doesn't up to a point. I gave Sandara the remains of Rosie Cuswell, so I'm assuming that Conchobar will want to go with that. Yep, you release Conchobar into her service. Go with that. <laughs> you make it sound so... Oh, yeah, I assumed he would want to go with the hand of his dead girlfriend. Can't well, to go there. you know, they can get her revived. She said that she's going to an island of clerics, so... I figure that they give it as, you know, a training test for one of the noobs. Show that they can reach that next cleric level by resurrecting the dead rotting head we've been carrying around. That is one way to look at it. <laughs> well, hey, hey, to be fair, you know, I put it in a jar and I've been filling that with high-proof uh, vodka, so it shouldn't be de decomposing too badly. Excellent. Ah, uh, magical formaldehyde. What would I do without you? <laughs> <laughs> is um, that trip? It is a level two, level one spell. Um, uh -huh. I'm thinking that since we're not engaging in slavery, we can give them Shivika, our are. slaving consultant. Okay. Are we marking these? Um, yeah, I think it's being marked. Okay, yeah. Somebody put Quinn. Let's see. 20, so that would work out to be like 13. Um, well, we have 27. Mahim, yeah, but they're the ones that we didn't bother naming. I'm just going through the named ones. Um, hmm. I'd like to keep Arita... Poop Deck Doris can go. But that's you. That's Lorraine <laughs> Harrington in Pirate Speak. <laughs> well, I was going to. All right, I will no, keep Arita get rid and of her Poop Deck, and she can have Badger. Whatever. I was, I was keeping Badger because of her awesome hairdo. But <laughs> you already killed me. Snake breath, Enrico. Live forever, my friend. Well, you know, you didn't just come to my wild. I really only have two options for dealing with people. That's true. <clears throat> that is true. Um, do we want to keep Crute because he seems to be a unique source of wisdom for young ca captains? Yeah, probably good call, yeah. <laughs> yep. And we probably need to keep him around to keep him sober. We don't want him to feel rejected again. Yep. 
One, two, three. And they can have Pips and Kipper, and then they've got two-thirds of the name people, and we're keeping Croup, Slippery Sill, Arita, and Poop Deck. Okay. And the at yet unnamed crew members can be divvied up. Of course. Random crew members are assigned randomly. All right. So the total's the same? Indeed. You should still have 20 ish. 27. Yeah. Cool. All right. To Goat's Head. Which is very close. Okay. You sail to Goat's Head. It's a very small dock. It's only got about four dockings, or berths, I should say. And it seems to be something of a, a local village tradition to come out and greet people with wreaths. And so all of your sailors who poured in all get their, uh, their wreaths. When you and where's this at? Goat's head. It's fire grass. Oh, goat's head. Okay. All right. Yeah. And uh, when you leave off, Captain Aisha Hami, she says, "Well, it was nice doing business with you. If I ever see you again, I suppose I shall have to kill you." <laughs> yeah, we can I live with that. I thank her for oh. her professionalism and uh, kindness throughout this. She turns to her kid tomes and says, "There's something I must tell you." I am not yes. left-handed. She oh. turns around and walks away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she went easy on me. Thank you. Many for taking. So good. I was watching Homeland earlier today. Now that I've found out that he is Inigo Montoya, I just can't stop seeing it. <laughs> Every time I look at his face. So, what do we want to name this ship? The Laughing Dolphin. Can we rename two. it without having to re squib it? You can, but I was just... everyone will know it's still the Sandbalot. Anyone who's ever seen right. the Sandbalot before. And of course, yeah. no, it has a giant totally name sandbal. tag that says Sandbalot. I just really want to repaint the name tag. I see. Okay. Well, you can certainly. Send some sailors over the uh, the stern. Let me know when you decide on a name. The Dancing Dolphin. Very well. <laughs> what happened to uh, looking for rumors in Goat's Head? That too. I just had to move it so I could see the name over see. Firegrass oh. Island. Oh, okay. So we, we want to try so. to... Do our infamy I... thing again? You can certainly attempt it. I'm going to try a knowledge local to gather rumors and whatnot. Okay. I, Particular I... rumors, or what are you trying to gather? Uh, I don't know. I'm just basically putting my ear to the ground. This is a new port and trying okay. to see. Why don't you ask questions about Tidewater Rock? Yeah, that too. We're going to ask questions about Tidewater Rock. Fair See uh, the lay of that. We're close enough. 26. Okay. So you get invited into uh, a minor official's uh, dining hall for the evening. And he is a, a large, dark-skinned uh, Mwangi native. And as you enter, you Does realize... Does he speak polygon? He does, but you realize so that uh, he's keeping this meeting very traditional, which means you need to present him with a gift. Something worth mm. 25 gold pieces or less. As a kind of bribe. 20. A gift? Yes. 25 GP or less, huh? Do you have something like that on hand? Well, I have that holy symbol. Are you going to present that to him? 
can I do a quick look around see if he's like is he cool with having a ragathelian holy symbol okay so you look around uh, his dining hall you can see it's adorned with numerous trophies it looks like minor trinkets from a dozen different cultures and then, yeah uh, Okay, so you hand over the holy symbol and he breaks out into a wide smile and says, Ah, yes, it is good for you to respect the old ways. My name is Officer Mila. Now, you want to know more about Tidewater Rock? Yes. Mm. Yes, sir, I do. Yes. The rock is known as one of the most defensible locations on Windward Island, the westernmost island in a small archipelago south of Motaku. It is quite close to where we are now, perhaps a day's sailing. Hmm. It is currently run by Lady Augusta Smithy. Ever since her husband, Iron Bert Smithy, has died, she is somewhat lonely and has been looking for someone to help her run her island. She was once regarded as very beautiful and she is of legitimate noble birth. I am told that she presents all the credentials of a, a former Galton noble. She is still a handsome woman and I welcome her whenever she comes to my port. But her visits have been somewhat sparse of late. If you are heading there, you should keep an eye out for her sergeant-at-arms, Rolster McClea. He is a foul man, ill-tempered, and while he keeps to the rules of the port, I would not be surprised at Tidewater to find him stabbing you in the back, quite literally. The garrison has about eight to ten soldiers. There are also numerous children and servants on the island. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I think perhaps most significant is the tide shift about 10 feet up and down next to the rock. It is very unusual to port in there. It does have its own dry docking facility to which these tides help. I don't know the word. It helps facilitate moving a ship in and off of the dry dock. At high tide, the waves themselves move up to the very doorstep of the castle. It makes it somewhat difficult to maintain a continued siege on tidewater, as the castle opening and bridges are all covered in water during the high tides that happen a few times a day. I do not think that the, the castle will be an easy take if you were to assault it, and in fact I would say this is foolishness, my friend. Is there anything else you'd like to know about the Tidewater? Hmm. Can you tell us more about uh, the lady? What more would you like to know about her? Friends, enemies, alliances. She has uh, none at the moment. Favorite color, hobbies. After the death of her husband and the closure of her other ports upon the islands uh, Tidewater Rock remains her only holding uh, the only reason it has not been taken is because of its immense defensibility well she does How not have he any die? he died in battle with who? I'm not certain another pirate lord I suppose I will say that her favorite color is unabashedly purple. In fact, I believe it's all she wears. I'm not certain how that will help you, but... You're else. the ones... You are my guests, so... And if you must know, her hobby is slowly stretching and quartering anyone who dares attack the Tidewater and not <laughs> have the good decency to die. It is said she's wicked with a knife. That is an interesting hobby.
Uh, what about this roster? He patrols the water surrounding the Tidewater, you said? Royster McClee. I do not think the Tidewater has any more vessels to put out. No, indeed, he patrols the castle. And he doesn't like visitors. He does not all. like anyone. Hmm. They say he carries a great blade that shines of many colors. <clears throat> well, if there are no more questions, my friends, then let us eat and enjoy of Goat's Head's local festivals. He brings out local fruits, including sun fruit and various uh, liquors, and everyone has a right good time, I suspect. It looks Blah. like we're being joined by Adam, so let me add him to the call, and then of course I'm going to have to adjust all the face cams. And during that time, you guys can fill him in on what's happening. 